I want to love Lucid. They have so much going for them and a great vision and high-end competition for Tesla is a good thing too, but I'm afraid given recent events that Lucid might be going down the Nikola path to untrustworthiness and vaporware. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. A lot of this episode is related to the recent Lucid slash CCIV SPAC, or Special Purpose Acquisition Company merger. A SPAC, by the way, is a very weird thing where you can make a company simply to buy another company, and it only really exists to make money, not to build or create anything. Anyway, my buddy Warren Redleck goes way into detail about the Lucid CCIV SPAC, so you can watch his video if you want to get more about the business end of things. In this video, I really want to focus more on the technology aspect and what Lucid brings to the table in terms of tech. Really briefly, however, I think it's important to talk about the SPAC acquisition and figure out the context within which we'll be talking. So the merger was announced on February 22nd. Lucid will net about $4.4 billion, and CCIV itself is supported by Churchill Capital, which is a quote, blank check corporation. Churchill has valued Lucid at about $24 billion. And previous to all this, in 2018, Lucid had a $1 billion investment from Saudi Arabia, which now has, or at least had up until the SPAC, majority ownership of the company. And by the way, up until Saudi Arabia stepped in as kind of a white knight here, Lucid appeared set to go bankrupt. So is Lucid the next Nikola? I don't think so. First of all, Lucid actually has a factory in Arizona, not a pile of dirt, and Lucid is producing early production vehicles, so it's already leaps and bounds beyond what Nikola has done. What I want to discuss in this video is the lack of transparency and the disingenuous overpromise, underdeliver nature of Lucid's projections, which are similar to what Nikola did in the summer and fall of 2020, though certainly an order of magnitude less egregious than what Nikola did. As many of you know, Peter Rawlinson is the CEO of Lucid and he used to work for Tesla and touts this a great deal about his work in helping to design the original Model S. Elon Musk doesn't have a great deal to say positive about Rawlinson, but he did leave the company, so, you know, that could just be sour grapes, one never knows. Anyway, up until Lucid's official announcement of their SPAC merger on the 22nd, they had been promoting over and over again. And as I was researching this, this video, I saw just a ton of you know statements that first half of 2021, first half of 2021, spring 2021, that's when the cars were supposed to be coming out. But within hours of the SPAC, the production of the first Lucid Air Dream editions have moved back to late 2021, or at the very least second half of 2021. Lucid has been very tight-lipped about their number of pre-orders, although Rawlinson has said they have a bulging book of pre-orders. But Warren Redlick did some calculations, and it looks like it's not that bulging. Anyway, apparently they had about 6,000 vehicles on pre-order, but they've reduced the number to 577, or about a tenth of the production estimates, for the first year. Which, of course, brings up the possibility of a class action lawsuit similar to the shenanigans that we're getting from Nikola. Basically, the problem is that Lucid says that they have a $650 million in pre-sales or pre-orders, but they have 6,000 pre-orders, but that means that they're well below $100,000 per pre-order. So how many of the first-year orders do they have? Because all the first-year orders are well north of $100,000. And one other note to add to this is that Lucid itself does not claim it'll be profitable until at least 2023 at the early. So anyway, those are the facts as we know it surrounding the acquisition. The two Lucid Air models that will be out soon, second half of the year, are Dream Edition and the Grand Touring Edition. These are $169,000 and $139,000 respectively. Of course, this is rarefied pricing, right? This is ultra-luxury car pricing. As a point of comparison, Tesla's most expensive car on their website, the Plaid Plus Model S, is $139,990, so basically the same cost. And it too will be out in the second half of 2021. And Tesla has no Dream Edition equivalent at $170,000. As another point of comparison, Porsche's awesome Taycan is priced from $81,000 to $186,000, so around the same pricing structure as the Lucid Air series. Though, of course, this is a racing-type car, not a family sedan, so it's a very different market. Still, it's interesting to note the pricing overlap. I think it's also worth pointing out that demand for a car is approximately exponential with pricing. In other words, if you have a $50,000 car and a $25,000 car, the $25,000 car does not have twice the demand as the $50,000 car, but 10 times or more demand. 
Basically, far, far more people can afford a $25,000 car than a $50,000 car. Also, it's worth pointing out that eventually Lucid plans to get down to a sub $80,000 Lucid Air, but that's going to be several years from now, even according to Lucid. So the initial Lucid editions are going to be north of $100,000 each. Now that we've got the general background, in just a moment, let's look at Lucid's technology. But first, if you enjoy this episode, please do like it so other people can find it, and definitely subscribe for more of this stuff. Also, a real big shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You all are wonderful. Your support is very much appreciated. And we have a new patron since last time, Sven Wachter. Very nice to meet you. Also, as always, a big thank you to Zenly Music for the intro and conclusion music. And of course, don't forget about our merch store. We have a Tesla Plaid logo, along with a whole bunch of other items there. So take a look around and you can help support the channel with a purchase. And of course, don't forget that we are Amazon and Tesla affiliates. All the details are in the description. If you click on a link, you can help out the channel. So thank you. So what technology and advantages can Lucid and Lucid Air provide at this Model S Plus price point? And is it enough to make it competitive with Tesla and or other high-end automobiles? Let's break this down into a few categories. They have batteries, motors, a higher voltage EV architecture, highly efficient drivetrain, lightweight materials, and self-driving technology. First, let's take a look at the battery technology. Lucid, which started life in 2007 as a Tiva or a Tieva or something, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. They built EV battery packs and powertrains for other manufacturers. Specifically, they created packs for Formula E, and at least as of 2019, they still do. Formula E is an EV-specific racing circuit, which is really cool, by the way. Anyway, Ativa slash Lucid worked up packs that could actually sustain the cars for the entire race rather than just half, so there was no replacement that was needed during the middle of the race. According to Lucid, they did this through better packaging, better cooling, and better cell efficiency. The Lucid Air itself will use a custom chemistry lithium ion battery pack. I couldn't find what they meant by custom, but <laughs> apparently it's not what everybody else uses. Lucid also claims reduced resistance, lower heating of the pack, so more power transferred to the drivetrain. As as in, they claim 100 horsepower better transfer. Also, the battery pack will be, like newer Teslas, structural. Rather than dead weight, it'll actually add rigidity to the structure while removing other components, so it'll make things lighter weight. Given Lucid's racing heritage, this appears to be the best competitive advantage that they have. Lucid is also going to use a 924 volt architecture. Higher voltage basically means smaller wiring. You can carry the same wattage at lower amperage, which means smaller wiring, less heating of the elements. And you can see this from the formula that amperage is proportional to watts divided by voltage. And of course, if you think about how thick a 12 volt jumper cable for your car is compared to the wiring in your house, which is either 120 or 240 volts, you can see how much thicker you have to make wiring at lower voltages. Again, as a point of comparison, Tesla's architecture is 400 volts and Lucid is going to be over double that at 924 volts. So Lucid claims a lot less heat loss and that you can charge the car a lot faster as there is less resistance and less battery heating due to the higher voltage. According to Rawlinson, they will only produce 20% the heat of a Tesla battery pack during charging and discharging. Again, according to Lucid, they will get up to 20 miles per minute of charging, but this partially depends on where you are in terms of the battery pack charge level. Now, this seems like a really big deal, but it's not quite as big of an advantage as Rawlinson indicates. At max charging speed, in other words, the battery is partially full, my Model Y can charge at a V3 supercharger at between 16 and 17 miles per minute. So obviously that's a little bit slower, but it's not that much slower than what Rawlinson and Lucid are claiming for their charge speed. And of course, when charging, there are many factors at play, but obviously voltage is not the only thing that matters for charging time. As for the rest of the advantages, certainly smaller cables are lighter, so it should save some weight, but also higher voltages can be more dangerous to deal with and are more likely to cause fires. So this is a potential downside and we'll kind of have to wait and see how that all works out. Also, in terms of charging, Lucid is dependent on Electrify America, with whom they have a partnership. Of course, this saves them money because they don't have to build out the charging infrastructure themselves, but it does make them somewhat beholden to where and when a third party wishes to put in charging stations. Next is Lucid's claim to a better drivetrain. They are starting with a two-motor system, and eventually they're going to have a three-motor system like the Tesla Plaid Plus. The Lucid Air will supposedly do 0 to 60 in 2.5 seconds and a quarter mile in 9.9 .9 seconds, and will have 517 miles of EPA range. Now, of course, all of this sounded much more impressive before the Tesla Plaid Plus was announced. 
The Plaid Plus, by the way, will do 0 to 60 in 1.99 seconds or less, and a quarter mile in less than 9 seconds, which is... <laughs> and it will have 520 plus miles of range. And by the way, all of this for the same price as the Lucid Air Grand Touring Edition. Lucid's motors are very compact and lightweight, and of course operate at the 924 volt range of the architecture, which saves weight all around. According to Lucid, each of these motors gets 670 horsepower and 2,950 pound-feet of torque, and they can spin at a whopping maximum of 20,000 RPMs. These torque and horsepower measurements, by the way, are motor torque and horsepower not to the wheels. With the dual motor system, the Lucid Air will supposedly get the car 1,080 horsepower to the wheels. And again, this sounds great until you look at the Plaid Plus, which has 1,100 horsepower. And by the way, do you get the feeling that Tesla built the Plaid Plus specifically to beat the Lucid Air on every single spec? So anyway, the Lucid Air has very cool technology, but really nothing that's demonstrably better at metrics than the other cars in this price range. Now let's look at the materials. They have alloy and composite components that they say draw heavily on aerospace techniques. Ironically enough, of course, SpaceX's Starship has gone back to stainless steel, but that's a topic for another day. Anyway, these materials should indeed help with range, as any weight shaved off increases the distance you can travel. And this mostly aircraft-grade monocoque aluminum should actually save a lot of weight on the vehicle itself. However, as you might expect, all of this costs a lot of money to manufacture, which is part of the reason for pricey cars. And what about autonomous capability? Well, the Lucid Air will have Dream Drive, which will be based on mobilized technology, and you can see my video on that above if you're interested. Lucid will have over-the-air updates, yay, <laughs> so that's a good thing, and it will have a front long-range radar, four short-range radars, a front LiDAR, three front cameras, four side cameras, two rear cameras, 12 ultrasonic sensors, four surround view cameras, and one driver monitoring camera. Again, as a point for comparison, all Tesla cars have one front-facing radar, eight external cameras, three to the front, four to the side, and one to the back, 12 ultrasonic sensors, and a driver monitoring camera that is not yet functional. So the Air clearly has more sensors, but the really significant element is the LiDAR system, which Tesla does not have and claims it won't need. And as a note, Rivian just removed this from their sensor suite, and more on that in another video coming soon. I personally think the bigger question is going to be whether Mobileye or Tesla is going to be able to achieve full self-driving capability first. And also whether IQ4, which comes from Mobileye, or Hardware 3, or I guess it's Hardware 1 now from Tesla, <laughs> will be powerful enough, or will we have to wait for IQ5 or Hardware 4 slash Hardware where to. In my opinion, Tesla is going to win this battle, but the big thing here is Tesla has control of their own destiny, while Lucid has to depend on a third party to make this all happen. So Lucid again has cool technology here, but they really can't control how well all these sensors will perform. That's really up to Mobileye and their tech. Finally, let's take a look at the machine that builds the machine, the factory. As Elon Musk is so fond of saying, making a prototype is easy compared to ramping full-scale production. In December of 2020, Lucid completed the Casa Grande factory, which sits on five 590 acres in Arizona. They call the factory the AMP-1 for Advanced Manufacturing Plant Number 1, which is actually a pretty cool name. Not quite giga level, but it's still pretty cool. And Lucid claims that at full ramp, this first phase of this factory will produce 30,000 cars per year. At present, Lucid is producing early prototypes on the line, but we haven't seen any, you know, real or official or production cars rolling off this line yet. Of course, the Lucid Air is going to be the first car they produce, but in the next phase, it's supposed to be able to produce their Project Graph SUV models starting in like 2023 or so. This factory, by the way, has been a long time coming. It was announced all the way back in 2016. Also, at present, it's a little unclear how many workers will be required at the factory, but Lucid has committed to local government to hire 2,000 people eventually. Lucid says that this is the first purpose-built EV factory in the country. And yeah, that's mostly true. Obviously, Fremont was taken over from another auto manufacturer, and Giga Nevada is more of a battery plant. Now, Giga Texas will change all of this because it's going to be absolutely massive when it comes online, but Lucid did technically get there first. At full ramp up, Rawlinson claims that they will be able to produce one car per 10 minutes. By comparison, the best I could figure is that Tesla's producing around 11,000 cars per week at Fremont, which is just over one car per minute. And to be fair, of course, it's taken Tesla a long time to get to this metric. Lucid's phase two is going to increase capacity to 90,000 cars per year, but this seems pretty far away. Lucid says in the quote, 
coming years, they're going to get to 40,000 cars per year first. By the way, Lucid has a separate powertrain factory that's about six miles away from their Amp1 factory. Obviously, this distance is not a huge deal, but it does, of course, increase travel time and complicate logistics a bit. For example, items have to be stored in the Amp1 factory to be ready to use in building the cars. And interestingly enough, as I said before, every single article on the factory, and most on Lucid itself, stated spring 2021 or first half of 2021 as the timing for when the first cars were going to be available for customers. So indeed, there was a lot of hype about when these cars were coming out. All right, so what can we conclude from all of this technology and other things? Well, first of all, Lucid has an actual factory, and that's a big deal, and they are producing limited trial runs of their cars. Also, of course, they really do have some interesting technology, but it's not necessarily as groundbreaking as Lucid claims. And remember here that Lucid is playing in the very high-end league right now, with their first two cars running from $139,000 to $169,000. And these cars are not imminently out either. By end of 2021 could be 10 months away from when I'm filming this, and that's assuming that they stick to this new schedule. Of course, the Tesla Model S and others are available now, and other competitors, especially in China, but also in the US as well, are coming out with new competitive vehicles all the time while Lucid is still in the future. So Lucid definitely does appear to have solid facilities to manufacture their cars, but are these cars going to be good enough and do they have interesting and valuable enough technology in them to make a splash with consumers and break into the high end of an ever more crowded field of EVs? From what we can glean, the target production numbers and an apparent lack of consumer demand indicate problems ahead, but hopefully Lucid will get through these issues. In summary, certainly Lucid is not another Nikola and I expect to see their cars on the road by a year from now. The real question will be, is the technology and are the cars good enough to sell in quantity when cars like the Tesla Model S Plaid Plus will be out too? That remains to be seen, but I personally predict that Lucid will have to survive until they can produce a sub $70,000 car if they ever want to have a chance of becoming profitable. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun and interesting. Definitely let me know in the comments what you think about Lucid's plans. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.